I think that's a great point because the message, the simple message of human design put out by Ra is love yourself. And it is not love your neighbor, but follow their rules to be a good neighbor. Love yourself. Because from there, the new dimension, new horizon of humanity can, can flourish. If we can really own ourselves, then we will learn to respect other lives too. That's very foundational. And that's the basic message of it. Now, when we talk about human design or any of these principles, we really have to come from that place of having cultivated the love and the understanding of ourselves that extends to the one who's right in front of you right now. And so, we can have different degrees and different levels of understanding and knowledge about human design, of course, because there are always teachers and advanced students. But then when we share the information, how can we put it into the words to really see the other person and be able to support and honor that person's own what we call the authority, like that person has a love within about himself or herself and how can we actually one of the way that the person has cultivated the love and that's a process too and it has to be like a very supportive and empowering way it cannot be the dogmatic teaching of like you have to do this you know like this is what you do because this is what your type is or what your design says i think that we have to, like, as human design spreads to the communities and to the world more, that's the kind of language that we really have to cultivate. Because let's say, like, even 10, 20, 30 years ago, that kind of language wasn't still really popular. And we may still see that kind of language in, in human design or talking about human design on the internet. That's not human design. The essence of human design is, as we spoke of, like it's something that's very pure. It's more of like us catching up with the evolution of the language, evolution of the way that people had been relating to each other in these recent years to really be able to apply human design and talk about human design. So, yeah. The way I've been kind of explaining it, because I've really been feeling that, just say that's a core purpose or intention that's the close the words that we can have to most accurately describe the sense of what this lineage is and what this you know in this particular expression of all these lineages you know we're wanting to keep on going on that unification journey and we're wanting to continue to evolve and ride the waves and learning as quickly as possible without going into like this is so awful and wrong and we need to repent and you know rather than keep on going keep on going it's like you can track it through all those lineages. It's the commonality there that leads to all those threads that become human design. And because it's its own living thing, mm. of course, mm. it's like the same way that, you know, here we'd talk about a song line being, you know, it's a living thing that needs to get sensed and felt and has an impact and, and is therefore protected in some way. Naturally, it's just acknowledging its boundary. If I've been feeling that the same with Superfeast here, and therefore when I feel it, sometimes people will want to come in here because I haven't placed a boundary or a gate to be like, hey, just so you know, you're stepping into a world here where this is the intention and you have a look on your face the way you're coming into a desert. Interesting, actually thinking about like your difference between permaculture in Australia and Japan. I'm like, the way I've been using is you think this is a desert because you've spent most of your time in the desert in business and at work, but this is a rainforest. And although there's connections, if you think that you're way of doing things and your rules and the things that you like doing are going to apply here in terms of the way that you communicate, the way you approach your job, you know, and whether there's like the principles around having the capacity to know that you are operating a role, you are in no way that role ever. You never will be. You are never ever going to be that title or, you know, that kind of stuff. Or likewise, you have to care enough to communicate. If you feel something with charge, you have to communicate it, which is a difficult one. And you need to put mechanisms in place, but you cannot let it fester. Because if you do, the whole thing will die in this rainforest. Mm. You've been in a desert of a business where you can get away with that because it's a different model. But that's, it's like the spade is a spade. 
And that's when hearing you talk about, you know, like we were talking a little bit about earlier about that not going into a place of judgment hmm. of like what humanity has done is awful and bad. So let's just look at anyone who's coming to human design. Not that I've seen this or think it's actually possible because I think it's really well put together, but who wants to get into it because they're starting in a place of judgment of themselves or life is difficult. Therefore, I'm going to go to human design like that process. Where would they end up? That seems like such an intrinsic value of human design in order to keep on moving, you mm -hmm. know, and you've talked a bit about Ra. I'd love to hear about Ra's yeah. attitude to when you judge things that humanity's done. Mm. I think Ra said this in his own way many times too, but if we keep judging or insisting on that model of the moralistic worldview, you're going to become obsolete in this evolution of humanity. Because what Ra said about where we are headed is we are all going to have to be a role model of who we are to represent our unique design in order to exist in this world. And that's just how you are saying about the rainforest system. And it's not something that only you have planted there, but there's going to be all different sorts of new vegetation organisms somehow come through. And we've seen in the evolution of permaculture farm, like in 20, 30 years, there's going to be new things, like a lot more delicate and complex organisms that you will find on the surface of rocks or under the ground. You didn't plant it there, but it just happens because that was their way of taking on the role that was there. And in the desert, you may not expect as much of that kind of happening or the surprise of you know, new creation. And because if we just teach people or set up an environment in a way that it just follows the principles, then nothing much will evolve. But we are at a very different time in our human history now. There can be a lot that is possible then we have to step into the world as a role model representing ourselves. And everybody should come together with who we are through our authority, not following this doctrine or not following this school of thought. But it's all available. So we have access to anything and we are allowed to believe anything. But at the same time, let's represent what we believe in through our walk of life and not by the school that we associate it. So yeah, more than anything, I think human design should really advocate that kind of approach. And it's not like, you know, we do, I do human design and I'm this type and I'm an analyst and this is what I do. Not like we have to be very open and good about, okay, if we know an interesting human design, we should be interested in where it came from. We should be interested in like this person, Ra, who downloaded it and he was a human being too. Like. What was his experience while he was committed to find this, source this, and establish this system, and also work for 20 years, like lecturing massive amount of materials and left us so many references? Who was he? And why did he talk about human design in the way that he did? That was because of his design too. So when we ever to just, you know, shift the perspectives, which human design enables you, you to do. Because when you learn about human design chart, you can look at your own chart to study the basics, but then you can look at the people in your family, the charts of you, in your family and charts of your business associates and really understand and cultivate understanding for that person's way of looking at things. And then we get to actually get the holistic picture of it. Like, you know, okay, then exactly the principle, the pure essence of this was like that. Even though we all have limited perspective on that essence, if we are able to gain, you know, a few more perspectives on that, then I think we can deepen the understanding of that. <laughs>